If any of you are familiar with me, um, you would know that I follow spirit without question. When guided to do something, I simply do it. The reason that I follow spirit without question is I made something called a universal vow. Um, I'll do another video on that. It's profound to say the least. But this experience that I had is in sharing some information that is far different from any of my other videos. Um, but again, I was guided to do so, so I'm going to share this experience. It starts when I was up at the Isetti Ranch. The season had ended, and I believe there were only four of us on the property at all. It was early evening, but it gets pretty dark up there in the later season. Um, a very, very close friend of mine, and that does not even come close to explaining our connection. The two of us were out in the Field of Dreams um, watching Mount Adams. You could see the outline of the mountain, but it was very, very dark. Um, that area is extremely active with the extraterrestrial craft and, and so forth. I saw a lot of fast-moving ships uh, that night uh, before he had come out to speak with me. And as we were talking, uh, these ships are moved so fast they transverse the entire sky in less than a second. If you don't catch them right at that second, you're not going to see them. I probably saw seven, eight, nine of them before he, 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 had, he hadn't, even, hadn't even seen any of them. All of a sudden, the two of us looked off to the right and only maybe four or five hundred feet off the ground was this incredibly bright light streaking towards Mount Adams. Um, we saw the light, and then what we saw was the ship itself had pushed the, the propulsion field all the way forward in front of the ship, exposing the ship. The, the propulsion field was a very deep, deep blue and purple energy, and it looked like a mushroom cap in the very front of the ship. The ship itself was an elongated crystal very profound in feeling. It was very, there was no doubt that there was extreme intent behind showing us that ship. At that point, the ship immersed back into the propulsion field, vanished, but you could see the energy, it went right into the mountain, and we were both like, whoa. Now, I have seen hundreds of ships throughout my life, Never seen anything like that before. I'm actually getting lit up just just by the energy of just remembering that experience. Fast forward a couple of months, I'm down here in Houston, speaking to my friend, and uh, we were talking on a very profound level. He asked me to do a channel and get some information for him, which I did. This channel ended up being the deepest channel I have done to date. This is what I saw. They brought me to the inside of a ship. The ship was had a very beautifully dark but super highly polished floor. It was somewhat of a rectangular room with rounded edges and there was a rectangular window that was curved. And through this window, it was very elongated you could see it was like looking out into space. And in this window, standing in front of this window, was this incredibly tall male humanoid being wearing a very dark gray, not skin tight, but very tight fitting uniform, for lack of a better term. Around the collar, where the collar would actually if it, if it was made here on Earth, it would, would have been sewn onto the, to the uniform, was this gold band that was what seemed alive, and it was spiritual technology of a sort. I didn't understand it. What this being was doing was, in the window itself, was this round series of energy, and the only way I can describe it is it looked like a kaleidoscope with many of these aspects. And this being was taking each of these fractions or, or 
pieces of within the kaleidoscope and moving them around. Now, the being, let me stop there before I get too far. The being was incredibly beautiful. Uh, short, dark, brownish hair. But one thing I want to say here is when you see or experience these high-level beings, uh, they have this incredible androgynous uh, aspect to them where the males are so beautiful as are the uh, the females. It's a different perception. It's a different uh, expression of self, I guess. Now, this was not a fourth, fifth, or sixth dimensional channel. This was incredibly high. This was 12th, 13th, or above dimensional um, aspects of this being. And I'm, I'm getting very emotional at conveying um, this information. This being was doing something by moving each aspect of these of this kaleidoscope what the as what the little fractions within the kaleidoscope were were a display of all the timelines that are associated with the earth now i had to write down some notes because some of this stuff is pretty heavy duty um this is an incredibly high technology it's um this being created something, a technology that is some of the most advanced and uh, t technology that exists within this universe and anything that is associated with this universe. It's called harmonic culmination. And what it is, is the braiding of timelines using extremely precise aspects of multidimensionality simultaneously. It creates something called vibrational reciprocation, or to oversimplify, multidimensional ripple effect. Okay? Um, it's important to understand that as we incarnate, you may have certain aspects of different races. You may be, be you know, consider yourself Pleiadian, Syrian, uh, Andromedan, and so forth, right? Um, but what is in very, very important is that is a very, very narrow, narrow perception of the truth. The truth is that we do not incarnate in any singular timeline, but rather a series of timelines interacting and converging at specific moments of intensity. Um, we are not any single thing, but we are expressions of a much greater omnipresence. We don't have a reference to fully comprehend. It's not in our perception. Our perception is far too narrow to understand what the, the ramifications and the depth of what this individual is doing. Having said that, this technology... I'm still trying to wrap my, my mind around this. The ability to take extremely precise aspects from different dimensions and pull them down into a very, and I want to say this, braided timelines to create different effects and different possibilities for these timelines. As we incarnate, the way it was shown to me in the past was, it's kind of like if you look at braided hair. Say you're looking at bra uh, a strand of braided hair, excuse me, and then you zoom in to this braided hair and you realize that each strand is made up of a string of bubbles. Each of those bubbles is an incarnation for an expression from that particular being or beings as it may be. So as this information comes through and we really take into account that we are not any singular thing. In fact, these simultaneous incarnations, we are incarnating vast amounts of lifetimes simultaneously. It's very hard for many of us to even accept that we are indeed all God beings. So, 
as I was going into this channel and it was incredibly emotional, this particular being showed a lot of the aspects. Now the ship itself, let me talk about that. The ship itself was a feminine energy and a consciousness of which the, the operator, this being, and the ship have a symbiotic relationship. The ship herself is called Astrea. The Astrea Mountains in Arizona were named in her honor, um, but with a very small understanding of who, what, and why she is. She's ancient beyond our comprehension. This technology is having a tremendous effect on us right now. Again, it's called harmonic culmination, and it creates vibrational reciprocation or the multidimensional ripple effect. This particular individual that created this technology has expressed a part of his consciousness down into an incarnation on this planet and it happens to be my friend. Um, I don't know how to put it, but my perception of this is probably as limited as everyone else's, but I know that I feel this profound emotion when I even think about this stuff. It's something that I don't believe is directed towards our conscious, our, our waking consciousness, but yet our subconsciousness that will seep down through our everyday lives and that knowledge in the back of our mind is, is being pushed to the foreground. I think it's really, really important for everyone to fully understand that they are vast in nature. They are no singular thing. All of us are everything. We have been, will be, and are all things. We are consciousness itself. We are the omnipresent creator. <sighs> I don't know where to go from this, this point, but as I said, when guided to do something, I do it. This is something that is so important and it's affecting in a profound way the ascension of this planet. Blessings.